Hello and welcome to Practically. My name is John Stevenson and thank you very much for joining me. Today we're going to talk about Spacemax. Uh, Spacemax is a an editor, a, well a configuration for an editor called Emacs and uh, I'm going to give you an overview of why it's uh, why I use it so much, why it's my favorite tool and hopefully give you some idea about what you can get out of it as well. Let's uh, jump to the website. So this is a Practically website. Uh, so I've got a guide on setting up Spacemax uh, specifically for closure development but any kind of development in general most of it is applicable and uh, so we're going to walk through uh, just some of that just the introduction part of this as well uh, so as I mentioned um, so this is the start of the book um, it's uh, so Emacs itself is an editor it's an editor that's been around for a quite a long time now uh, since the since the early days of the free and open source uh, software in the early 70s and um, so some of the user interface uh, aspects are a little different but it uh, it's pretty easy to pick up and actually it is quite logical uh, design around it and the uh, the nice things about uh, uh, Emacs is that it's incredibly uh, flexible as well uh, so if we actually have a look at the uh, Emacs website, uh, so it, its main purpose is to be an extensible, customizable, uh, and free, uh, as in uh, a completely open source, uh, free software uh, editor. And uh, it is um, really, and it's obviously available on all the different platforms, uh, including Windows. And um, it is a very nice uh, editing experience. In fact, it's so rich that people often refer to the, uh, Emacs as an operating system and uh, because you can pretty much do like, almost anything you can think of digitally you can do in Emacs. Um, so obviously there's all the HTML editing, so you've got the context-aware uh, editing modes, uh, all the code highlighting, syntax highlighting uh, for pro probably the, the biggest range of uh, languages that you've ever that you know and, and even lots of languages that you've never heard of as well uh, and uh, all the documentation is built in so it's very easy to kind of see that so Unicode support so you can have all sorts of different characters in there you can even include um, little emoticons as well um, it's highly customizable uh, and this is uh, being borne out by just the amount of packages that are available so there's a huge amount of packages uh, available as well so it's all customizable through uh, it's something called Emacs Lisp uh, and if you're a Clojure developer then there's a lot of commonality between Emacs Lisp and Clojure. They're, they're both Lisp languages and uh, so you should be able to pick up uh, uh, and be able to edit uh, and play around and experiment with the configuration of Emacs really really simply. Um, it's uh, Instead of defn it's defun but uh, there's uh, and there's some specific um, Emacs uh, APIs to learn but the actual structure of the language is, is pretty similar. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a huge amount of packages available as well. Uh, so Melper is the is usually the uh, package management uh, repository that everybody uses. Um, it's got all the latest packages, so it's got over yeah uh, five uh, four thousand packages available. Uh, I've had ninety one million downloads to date. So you can see that Emacs is definitely uh, still used by a huge amounts of people across the world and um, it's uh, but how do you actually tap into all this power uh, all these packages there's an awful lot which how do you know which packages to use which ones work well together and so on this is a uh, this is kind of a challenge of uh, yeah, of using Emacs uh, it gives you this massive amount of uh, customization but then you have to go and figure out how to set it all up and tweak it and so on. So people do spend and invest a lot of time into customizing uh, Emacs, which is great. It gives you a very highly tailored experience and you can get Emacs to do pretty much exactly what you wanted to do and how you wanted to do it. It does take a little bit of time uh, and so rather than spending time configuring your editor you can actually use uh, a, a community package like uh, Spacemax so Spacemax is a community driven uh, Emacs distribution so it doesn't include Emacs itself Oops. It, uh, it is a, a configuration or a set of configurations for Emacs so you would down, e download Emacs uh, and then add Spacemax on top of it and it would basically save you 
an awful lot of time uh, like configuring uh, Space Max to do th uh, to Emacs to do things, and uh, it's it does allow you to give like a shortcut of having a, a very rich experience uh, without having to do a lot of the work. You can rely on the like experience of the community to set things up in a way that um, has pretty good uh, actual uh, like common defaults for uh, a lot of the uh, environments because people are contributing uh, the changes that they, they're actually doing, the changes that they've added to Emacs um, as they're using it and contributing it back to Space Max uh, to, uh, to, yeah, to make it uh, yeah, great, a great experience for everybody. And so some of the specific uh, features of, of Space Max is this idea of um, ergonomics. We want to make it uh, as easy to use uh, Emacs as possible. Uh, and one of the things that they do is uh, have a, something called a mnemonic menu system. So if we click on the second image. So down here we've got a, a which key menu. Uh, so when you press space, this menu appears. And uh, as you can see, the application, if you want to go into applications, it's under A, buffers are under B, windows are under W, and you can toggle things off uh, with T. Uh, and so it's very consistent kind of all the way through whatever language you're using, whatever like, features you're using of spe uh, Space Max. I try and have this very mnemonic way of uh, d uh, like, uh, creating keyboard bindings for uh, all these functions because there are like thousands of functions you can actually call. And um, you're not going to have uh, a, a keyboard binding for everything in every context. So they have uh, this idea of different contexts. So in this case, this one, uh, this uh, file is a, is a web file. So you're in a mode that is um, the web uh, web uh, major mode, and uh, you and therefore you get uh, a, you can get a specific context menu just for like, doing web development. But they're kind of similar actions that you do across these modes have similar functions. So searching works the same, uh, like putting in links and so on in markdown versus org mode is, is the same kind of key bindings as well. So it's all very a mnemonic and it makes it a lot more discoverable. So you don't have to try and figure out what a function's called because you can just go in and search through the menu just by using what what it is you want to what is that the the name of the thing is uh, will be where you, you can find it and so for closure specifically there's a closure mode and so it gives you all the closure specific syntax highlighting and uh, you can go in and uh, when you evaluate uh, in uh, closure then it's evaluating using the closure the cider REPL. Uh, if you were evaluating ELISP then it would be using the the, uh, the ELISP REPL and so on so but it's the same kind of commands so it's very easy to to jump between two different uh, languages two different kind of setups and use the same kind of uh, uh, key bindings and uh, menu system and so what else we got oh, yeah. and so there's a huge amount of packages available as we saw with the the melper there's over like yeah over 4000 packages available so how do we know which ones to work together so we look at um we look at the the way space max treats this it has an abstraction above packages called layers so a layer may contain one or more packages and uh it also com importantly contains the any configuration to make those packages work well together uh, so even if you add, uh, even if you know which packages to add, then um, you may need to still add some ELISP to be able to make them work well together. Uh, that might be just a simple line. It might be a little bit more than that. So um, yeah, the configuration layers in uh, in SpaceMax do all that work for you about configuring and making sure things are working together, and especially for languages as well. So if we look at the closure layer. Then again, this all this documentation is built in, as well as being on the web. Uh, so this is pulling in packages from CIDR. Uh, it's also pulling in things like CLJ Refactor, although it also makes that optional, uh, along with SayAd as well, which is a, a debugger. That's also optional, and you can uh, you can add and specify particular um, variables on the layer uh, on the um, on the layer to do to include or. And include features on, and packages as well. 
So, for example, if you wanted uh, fancy symbols like uh, the lambda for a lambda uh, and f for a function, anonymous function, then uh, you can enable them, but you don't have to. These things are kind of optional. But it gives you kind of a, a nice experience uh, straight out of the box, and uh, you can. It gives you some idea about how to get going and do stuff. And it sets up, uh, importantly for me, it sets up the consistent uh, keys for uh, for using with SpaceMax, so mnemonic keys. And so if you want to, um, if you want help, that's always under H for help. Uh, and uh, if you do HH, then it gives you the most common uh, help uh, command, which will be cider doc. And uh, so these these kind of conventions work all the way through SpaceMax. And if you want to go into the REPL again, the this is cider. Cider sounds like an S, so they use S for uh, the the menu system. And uh, so you can go in and anything you want to do with the REPL. Uh, the side of REPL you can go in and do, uh, in this case it's showing you space M uh, SB, but there is a, a shortcut. So when you've actually got a closure file open, you can just do comma and then uh, instead of the space M, uh, so you can do comma uh, SB, or if you're in Emacs mode, you can do uh, meta return uh, SB. But they're all pretty consistent uh, and a lot easier to learn. And also, you're you're not doing uh, you know I'm to use multiple fingers. So you can do space M is the only thing. Uh, so it's space M and then F. Uh, so space M and then S and F. Um, you don't have to do like you don't have to move your hands around uh, the keyboard to be able to kind of do Control X, Control E, or Control X, Control F uh, to save things. So they're a lot more gentler on your uh, on your hands than uh, than kind of classic uh, Emacs bindings as well, and uh, and these are all um, because it's a community thing. We can also also agree on like what these key bindings are going to be and have some consistency between uh, everybody's uh, Emacs experience. Uh, and so you can choose to kind of just use this. So if you want to pair with people and somebody else is using Space Max, they'll know pretty much how to do. Uh, how to use your setup, uh, or at least using all the kind of the um, the standard kind of uh, key bindings that are there, and you can also add your own key bindings as well. Um, it recommends putting them under uh, Command O, uh, and then you can put your own key bindings under there as well. And one of the other things that SpaceMax also brings is uh, it brings uh, Vim uh, and this uh, well this Vim style editing. Uh, of multimodal editing, so you can also again manage uh, the the complexity of your key bindings, and also have a, a lot more functions with key bindings by having uh, the multimodal uh, experience. So, uh, in normal mode, if you type uh, if you type F, it, it's actually going to uh, find a find the next character uh, rather than actually type in F as a character. Uh, because the, in normal mode you're 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 actually kind of working with the overall text. You're not working with, uh, you're not creating uh, text. You're not creating content. You're actually just uh, manipulating and reorganizing the the text around there. So you can have a, a much wider range of uh, of key bindings there. And if you want to actually edit uh, the uh, the text, you can go into insert mode, and you can add content. You can delete content very simply as well. And so you get different modes allow you to do different things. Visual is for like selection, and I edit is for doing things like multiple curse, multiple cursors, be able to uh, like do really some really advanced editing as well. Uh, and it gives you this whole language of like Vim gives you this whole language of being able to manipulate text really really simply. So you can actually um, you re-edit, you can refactor, you can even do some basic structural editing uh, using Vim as well. And uh, it allows you to, yeah, basically, basically wrangle your text uh, a lot faster. I feel than uh, than than without Vim. And anything else? So that gives you a, a pretty good uh, overview of uh, Closure. So next video we'll go through. Uh, sorry, it gives you. Uh, so that gives you a very nice overview of uh, SpaceMax and Emacs. I hope, and this book will kind of show you and guide you through how to use uh, the lots of features of this book, uh, and um, 
and so this book will give you a, a nice guide in how to use uh, Space Max and get the most out of it for closure development. I've also got an example uh, Space Max configuration file there as well, which I keep up to date. And um, it will give you, uh, yeah, I think it, it does take a little bit of time to to learn all the features and get the most out of uh, Space Max, but that's the same for any tool. But I think given the fact that you've got a, a nice menu system uh, and things are very easy to discover, then you don't have to learn everything all at once. You can maybe spend the first couple hours uh, to get familiar with the environment and get going and then learn everything else as you go along. Uh, I don't think it takes more than an hour or two to actually learn, and not even that really, to learn uh, enough of Space Max to be able to be very productive uh, quite quickly. Uh, okay, thank you very much for watching, and uh, in the next video we'll show you how to actually set up uh, Space Max and, uh, and configure it for closure development. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Bye-bye.